Hi, my name is Simon, currently in Cali in Colombia on vacations, uh, one day before returning to my home in Berlin with my wife and my son. Today is rare disease day, that's why I want to encourage everyone to speak out for PFS awareness. Me, myself, I'm a physician, I studied medicine and I'm working in a hospital. I'm suffering from post asteroid syndrome. And I think it's very important that everyone who has post finasteride syndrome tries to speak out, especially the doctors among you, because your stories weigh much more than the ones of other people. So when I was 31 years old, I started to take finasteride against hair loss. This worked pretty fine for me, so I didn't have any hair loss for about two years. And uh, the first symptoms I noticed were very dry skin, hair, eyes, mouth um, that didn't really bother me a lot but a few months later I developed very serious insomnia and insomnia is not one of the side effects which are listed in most finasteride leaflet packages. France did just change this and but in Germany and other uh, countries are still lacking behind. So it took me another year to find out that my insomnia might be connected to post finasteride syndrome or to finasteride. So when I re realized this, I started to uh, slowly taper off uh, finasteride. But instead of getting better, I actually got worse every day. Although couldn't explain this as a physician was really hard for me because every night I would sleep less until I only slept one hour per night for six weeks. And then I stopped sleeping at all and only slept every 48 hours for a few hours. and. As you can imagine, this was like torture. I tried sleep medications which didn't work. I did a sleep study, my REM sleep, which is important for recovery, was completely absent. So I didn't sleep, only a few hours. It took me nine months to get to about three hours, and then another nine months to get to four to five hours per night. Uh, this seriously impacted my brain health. I got severe brain fog, which is probably a result of neuroinflammation. Uh, therefore, it was very difficult for me to focus. I had memory deficits, which luckily resided. I couldn't drive car for six months, uh, and I had uh, two bike accidents in one week because I couldn't estimate the velocity and the distance of cars anymore. Uh, so also there, I had to be more careful. I also lost 12 kilos of muscle mass in about six months. So I went from 70 kilos to skeleton-like 58 kilos heavy man. Uh, my girlfriend thought I have cancer at that time. Also developed serious belly pain, night sweats. These belly pains uh, stayed there for about two years and only vanished after a very long fast uh, where I didn't eat any food for 11 days. And it was impossible for me to build up muscle mass for about two years. Also there I had to fight my way out that my body can react to uh, exercise again. Something that bothered me a lot, muscle pain, fatigue, crazy fatigue, erectile dysfunction, loss of libido uh, and probably one of the worst symptoms were also that I didn't feel any connection with anyone anymore. Uh, it was like I was playing a video game 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 365 days a year. It's like as if you would live behind a glass wall or if you would watch your own life uh, from a third person's perspective. And I can tell you this is really bad because you can't feel any emotions anymore even if you love uh, and you can't love people around you even if you know those people are incredibly important for you. And um, this is very different to depression where people sometimes have feelings or where they're sad or where they have at least some good days or moments within a week or within two weeks. In post finasteride syndrome, that's all flat line for years, maybe forever. And there's people out there who are suffering from post finasteride syndrome since more than 20 years. You can, you can imagine how hard this is and how this leads to many suicides in the community of people who are suffering from post-finosteroid syndrome.
unfortunately the disease is poorly understood and not really well recognized by most doctors and physicians so this leads to shame among uh, patients who are suffering from this disease look for help among doctors who obviously can't help them and uh, also to speak out and uh, so there's a re reinforcement of stigmata also because one of the main symptoms men experiences uh, erectile dysfunction and loss of libido although this disease probably is not limited to men alone because there's also women who take finasteride and who have changes um, I want to close this with a small story of a friend of mine within my small circle of friends and family I, I know four people who took finasteride and who got side effects one as a friend of mine who recovered after six weeks of stopping um, finasteride, his depression-like emotions uh, went away and uh, he could sleep uh, again and his sexuality returned. One is my uncle who took finasteride against prostate enlargement. He had to stop finasteride because he got incredibly irritated uh, he was crying, his family couldn't stand him anymore, so also he got better and finally his symptoms vanished after a few weeks after stopping finasteride. And one is me, who got better, a lot better, I'm one of the lucky cases, but who's still suffering from symptoms after more than four years of the first symptoms. And one is my friend Torben in Germany, who I knew from the time before I got post finasteride syndrome, and unfortunately he's not alive anymore. He took finasteride and one day he called my friends because he was feeling incredibly restless and couldn't sleep anymore for many days. He was very desperate and, and was looking for help. One day he smashes a laptop against the wall and jumped from the fifth balcony without leaving a note to his mom. And um, this was very incredible to me because I didn't expect that he would ever do something like this because I knew him as a very, very charming guy. Everyone liked him. He finishes uh, studies with A grades. He was a great person to be around and he was very successful with the other gender. But then one day a friend of mine told me that he also was on finasteride. And uh, the symptoms he described were exactly the ones that I was suffering from. So one day I took all my courage and contacted his mom after a while and who didn't know why he killed himself and I told him about my post finasteride syndrome and she told me that he was on finasteride uh, that he was also on anti antidepressants which obviously didn't work and uh, that he was also taking Viagra and uh, had seen more than three different urologists uh, because of his sexual dysfunction which is also a symptom of post finasteride syndrome so it's very obvious that Torben, my friend, long before I knew about PFS, also had PFS. He took his life in 2018, far too early at the age of 30, and he shouldn't be dead. His mom is still in grief. She didn't report his death to the pharmacovigilance authorities, nor did she speak out in public, so I have to do this. I want to encourage everyone, because today is Rare Disease Day, to speak out for post finasteride syndrome because we need more awareness to get more funding to solve this disease one day. But in order to solve it, we first have to understand it. And it's poorly understood, poorly funded. People feel ashamed to speak up because of their symptoms and because of their stigma. So it's important that you speak out. Every voice counts, every face counts. And especially to those 10 doctors that I know that are suffering from PFS themselves, please speak out. Your voice matters more than anyone else. You can convince other doctors also that this disease really exists and that it's not as rare as people think. We need your voice. Speak out now. See you.